Hey, Tim Schutz here again with C4D Training. Had a couple of comments about the multi-shader and that there were other ways to do it. And as usual with most programs, there's about a half dozen ways to do something. So I figured I would come back and cover the other way or ways to do this. So consider this multi-shader part two, electric boogaloo. Okay, so previously I showed you how to use the random effector to apply it to a piece inside of your clone. And I also showed you the way to do it where you could create multiple copies of the clone and apply the color to that and it would iterate through those clones. So let me show you. If we just have a simple object in a cloner, and here's my multi-shader. And if I click on my multi-shader, right now it's set to color brightness, which is what we had it in the last tutorial. And I apply this to my cloner object, and I render, we get that same problem where it's picking sort of the middle color and applying that to all our clones. And that's not what we want. So if we open our multi-shader back up, we come back in here, instead of color brightness, if we pull down and say index ratio, what that will do is it'll say, okay, clone number one, you're going to get color number one. Clone number two, color number two, and so on. So that's what we're going to do here. We set to index ratio, and now if we go ahead and render it, there we go. We've got color one, color two, color three. And that's fine. We've got a single object in our cloner. And now I'm going to show you here another example of we've got two objects and I've grouped them together in a null object. I don't want it to be a cube, then a cone, then a cube, then a cone. I want each clone to consist of a cube and a cone. So here's my multi-shader texture, just like we had in the other one. And it's set to index ratio. And if I apply that to my cloner and we render this off, we get gray clones. And that's not what we want. So one way to solve that is to make these editable. So if I select my two objects, make them editable, and now we render, we have our colors. We have our red, yellow, and purple. So if we go back to the phones here, we render, we see we get the multicolors, and that's because we're using our random effector. We can go ahead and we can delete that random effector. And now if we render this, we get all yellow phones, and that's because it's not applying a color to each one. So come down here to the multi-shader, and here we are, we're on color brightness because that's what we were using with the random effector. So if I pull down and I switch this to index ratio, that should solve the problem, right? Wrong. It's because, again, we're using a group here, basically. It's a bool with the body and the cutout, and it can't deal with that. So what we can do is we can actually select the bool and make it editable. And now when we render this, we get our different colors. The only drawback to that now is that our bool is no longer a bool, it's basically a group of editable objects. And that's fine as long as you don't want to change that. What I recommend when I'm working with my students to do is if they want need to make it editable, I tell them to go ahead and duplicate it and to turn that one off and keep it as a backup and you can even rename it Let's back up and then we can make this one editable and when we render we get our colored clones and if we ever need to go back and change something we can delete this one and go back to our bool and still have it there so hopefully this was helpful I'm Tim Schetz C4D training thanks for watching Thank <music> you.